Okay, with electrostatics, it's always important to read the question carefully so we completely understand which charge is in motion and which one is stationary. Here we've got a 50 microcoulomb charge sphere on the left, the blue charge. Its mass is 0 0.05 kilograms and it's initially 2 meters away from a red negative 30 microcoulomb charge. The 50 microcoulomb charge sphere is allowed to approach the other one. So the blue one is the one that's in motion. We can assume that this red one is fixed or nailed down. It's not going to move at all. Once this 50 microcoulomb charge is 1.2 meters away, so in other words, I'm hanging on to it here in the initial position where my hand is, and I let go, and it starts to speed up as it's accelerated towards this negative 30 microcoulomb charge. Remember, opposites attract. Once it's 1.2 meters away, we want to know how fast it's going. What is the speed of that sphere? Now I'm going to put a couple of different ways to solve this one. One of them is correct and one of them is incorrect. But we, it's really important to explain why the incorrect solution does not work. And we're going to start with that one. Now initially, many of my students look at this question and they realize that there's a force between the two. And rightfully so. There's an attraction between the two because opposite charges attract. So they go to their formula sheet and they look up their dynamics equations, which shows you all the formulas for forces, and they're going to figure out the final speed, so they're going to merge it with kinematics. Let's have a look at those equations now. So when I look at my kinematics equations and my dynamics equations, the common variable is our acceleration. So acceleration is what links the two together. If I can figure out my acceleration using dynamics, I can then go to kinematics and find my final velocity. Now, we have an equation that represents the force acting between two charged objects, and we call that Coulomb's Law. All we need to know is the distance between the two charged objects, known as r squared, and the values of the charges, which we have all of that information in this question. So a common mistake is they'll use this equation, students will use this equation, they'll solve for f, and because that's the only force that we're worried about acting on that blue charge, we say that that's the net force, and because we know the mass, we can get the acceleration. Once they have the acceleration, they can then switch to kinematics and figure out the final velocity. We assume it's initially at rest, so VO is zero. We're trying to find V final, and the distance over which that force acts is 2 minus 1.2 meters, so 0.8 meters, and they plug it all in, and they get an answer, but unfortunately it's wrong. Now here's why. It has to do with this Coulomb's equation here on the right. If we look carefully at Coulomb's law, we see that the force is directly related to the sizes of the charges. So if I double one of the charges, I double the force, which makes sense. But the problem arises with the relationship between the distance and the force. It's an inverse relationship. So as I get closer, as the charges get closer, the force actually gets stronger. So if I was to draw my force vectors in location 1 and in location 2, they might look like this. So we see I've drawn F2 quite a bit larger than F1 because the charges are closer together and there's a stronger force of attraction between the two. So F2 is clearly bigger than F1, which means my net force does not have a consistent value. Originally we just assumed my net force was whatever the value of F1 was, but obviously the value is growing. So if the force is changing, that means my acceleration is changing, which means my kinematics equations, at least for Physics 11 and Physics 12, where we haven't got the use of calculus, will break down on us, because we assume constant accelerations unless we're using calculus, which we're not going to use in this course. So we have to use a different method. So kinematics and dynamics only work if the force is constant or the acceleration is constant. So what are our other choices? Well, we can go to conservation of energy. Now we've already learned that the potential energy that exists between two charges can be given by K, Q1, Q2 over R. Now this is a scalar quantity whose sign depends on the values of Q1 and Q2. So in this case, because Q1 and Q2 are opposite signs, EP will overall be negative. You put them in exactly the way you see them. EK is our kinetic energy, and as usual, it's 1 half mv squared. Now, according to our conservation of energy law, 
the total energy before has to be equal to the total energy after as long as it's a closed system and no external forces come and give that charge a smack as it's moving from left to right which is the case here it's just naturally moving from left to right due to the energy provided by the opposite charges so we can use conservation of energy and all we need to do for conservation of energy is just keep track of what types of energy we started with and what types of energy we end with so we see initially all I have is potential energy since the initial velocity is zero remember we're pretending we're holding on to that blue charge and we're gonna suddenly let it go so all that exists is potential energy and at the end, after I've let it go, it starts to pick up speed, so it gains kinetic energy. And because the distance has changed, because R has changed, it's got a different final potential energy. So initially, I've just got potential, and at the end, I've got potential and kinetic. So if I use my conservation of energy equation, it will look something like this. So we see our conservation of energy equation written in red here. And all that's left now is to plug in our formulas and then put in our values. So let's do that now and see what we get for our final velocity. So we see our formula, kq1, q2 over r initial, is 9 times 10 to the 9 times 50 times 10 to the negative 6 times negative 30 times 10 to the negative 6, all divided by 2, equals kq1, q2 over r final. So r final would be 1.2 meters plus 1 half mv squared, which is our kinetic energy. And when you work out the numbers, you get the following with our final velocity being 13.4 meters per second.